Okay, let's get started. Om Sahana Babatu, Sahana Bunaktu, Sahavi Ryankara Babahai, Tejasvina Badi Tamas Tuma Vidvisha Bahai, Om Shantishanti Shantihi, Yo Antaha Pravishya Mamavacha Imam Prashuptam Sanjiva Yati Akila Shakti Daraswadamna Anyam Shtahasta Charana Shravadatwagadin Prana Namo Bhagavate Purusaya Tupyam Lasatu Shri Madananda Tirtenduruno Hrudambare Yadvachashandrika Swanta Santapam Vinikrantati Padavakya Pramana Gnan Pranam Yashirasa Gurun Vyakarishye Yatabotam Vishnu Tattva Viniranayam. So, uh, good afternoon, good evening, and good morning, everyone. Welcome to the 33rd lecture. I'm slightly sitting in London to do this lecture and probably drive back to Nottingham later tonight. So, we have a very exciting session, part 33, quite a lot of interactive session. And some of the ideas um, that we have grasped before comes back in this particular section of Katha Upanishad. So let's see what it says. So what have we covered so far? Just to remind you, we are in the second Adhyaya. We are in the third Valli, which has got 18 verses. So far, we have covered about four verses in this. So what were those verses? Urdvo, Mulo, Avak, Shakaha, Yesha, Ashwattaha, Sanatanaha. Tadeva Shukram Tad Brahma Tadeva Amrutam Muchete Tasmin Lokaha Shritaha Sarve Taduna Atyeti Kashchana Etadvai Tatu Yedidam Kincha Jagat Sarvam Prana Ejati Nismrutam Mahat Bayam Vajram Utyatam Ya Etad Viduhu Amrutaste Bhavati Bayadasya Agnihi Tapati Bayad Tapati Suryaha Bayad Indrashta Vayushta Murtyur Davati Panchamaha Ihaced Ashakat Bodum Prak Shari Rasya Vishrasaha Tataha Sargeshu Lokeshu Shari Ratvaya Kalpati. So these were the beautiful four verses that we did in the last two or three sessions. And last week, we were talking about, you know, Aparoksha Jnana. We talked about the third eye. How do we open our third eye? And how do we have this Aparoksha Jnana or the Darshana of the Antaryamin, who is inside all of us as, you know, we are the Jeevas and inside us is the Antaryamin. And how this concept of Aparoksha Jnana, Yama had introduced the concept of Aparoksha Jnana. Now, what is he going to do in the next verses? This is a very, very unique verse in Katha Upanishad. You will probably not find this in any other Upanishad. So it's a, it's a very, very important concept that uh, Yama talks about in this particular Krishna Ajurveda about what is that Aparoksha Jnana? How is that Aparoksha Jnana or the direct perception of the Supreme? How does the Jiva get the direct perception? And is there a gradation there? How is it different in different places? Uh, so Yama talks about this. So we got about four verses to do this. Um, let's see how it goes. So Yata Adarshe Tata Atmani Yata Swapne Tata Pitruloke Yata apsu pari eva tadrushe tata gandharva loke chaya tapo eva brahma loke indriyanam pritak bhavam udayaha astamayor chayate pritak utpadyamananam matva diro nasochati indriye bhyaha param manaha manaha sattvam uttamam Satvadi Mahanatma Mahato Avyaktam Muttavam Avyakta to Paraha Purusho Vyapako Alinga Evacha Yam Yatva Muchate Jantuhu Ambrutatvam Chagachati. Okay, so those are the four very, very clear, clear verses from Katha Upanishad, again illustrating some key Vedic philosophy. So let's see what, what, what that means. So we are all very familiar with Aparoksha Jnana, right? So Aparoksha Jnana is a situation where we have a direct perception of the Lord. And that perception of the Lord happens with his grace. And that direct perception of the Lord happens only when we know him. And that 
knowability of brahman and how do we know him as as the abode of infinite auspicious attributes and without any defects and how can we know that brahman we can know that brahman only through the vedas and how do we understand the vedas we understand the vedas through brahma mimamsa or the brahma sutra so that is the sequence of events so we reach this point aparoksha gnana and at that point we understood that when we reach that aparoksha gnana the sanchita karma goes away with the grace of the supreme we continue to experience the prarabdha karmas okay so these are all key ideas and i'm i'm going through this again because unless we understand these fundamental concepts of vedic philosophy it's very difficult to grasp what yama is telling us in the subsequent verses so we continue to experience prarabdha karma at the point of aparoksha gnana we lose all our karmas okay so the bag of accumulated karmas are gone and we continue to still experience some of the prarabdha karmas and in fact you know uh, veda say the prarabdha karma of chaturmukha brahma is chaturmukha brahma for example is an aparoksha gnanin but for him the prarabdha karma is he should be alive for 100 kalpas yeah 100 brahma kalpas as you know 100 years of chaturmukha brahma before he actually goes to liberation so every soul no matter what it is or what its level in the in the gradation of the universe is as long as it's in samsara chaturmukha brahma also is in samsara although his attachment to the matter is very subtle he is nevertheless the current chaturmukha brahma is in samsara okay so nobody is is free from prarabdha karma and once the prarabdha karma is is completed then you go to the moksha sthiti okay so hold on to this aparoksha gnana concept so this slide is a new slide for today's talk so yama then says you know this aparoksha gnana that that uh, the jeevas get let me explain to you a little bit more okay so he says you know how this aparoksha gnana is he gives an illustration and again as you know yama in various places he has given various illustrations metaphors to get us to understand some ideas yeah and this is exactly what he is going to do in this verse talking about this aparoksha gnana so he says yata adarshe tata atmani yata swapne tata pitruloke यता अप्सु परीव तदृशे तथा गंधर्वलोके छाया तापो इव ब्रह्मलोके सो लुक एट वेरियस लोका दट ईज टॉकिंग अबउट पितृलोक गंधर्वलोक ब्रह्मलोक Or of course, we are all in the mrityu loka. So, or the first part of this verse talk about those exalted jivas in pitru loka in in mrityu loka who have actually had aparoksha gnana. Okay, so hold on to that idea because it's always worthwhile thinking about what it what is it that that uh, Yama is talking about. And of course, Yagya Valkya has taught us so many times that um, uh, so atma va are drastavya ha shrotavyo mantavyo niti dhyasitavya. So that idea. आत्मा वा अरे द्रष्टव्य द्रष्टव्य इज दि अपरोक्ष ज्ञान टू रीच दट अपरोक्ष ज्ञान ही सेज यू हेव टू डू श्रोतव्य मंतव्यो निधितव्य बृहदारण्य पोपुलेशन ओके सो द्रष्टव्य यू हेव टू सी ब्रह्मन विदउट हेविंग अ डायरेक्ट विशन ऑफ ब्रह्मन दट इज अ प्रिलिमिनरी स्टेप before you have liberation that is a vedic philosophical view we may agree we may not disagree but that is what the vedic philosophy is it is a it is a bitter pill but that is the pill for our salvation rigveda then as you know talk about when you say atma va are drashtavya when you need to see this antaryamin who is this antaryamin how does he look like rigveda gives us an answer and we have done this before what does rigveda say प्रतिरूपो बभूव तद अस्पम प्रति चक्षनाय इंद्रो मयाूपयते युक्ता हि अर शतादश सो वाट डज दिस डू इज for each and every so the literal meaning of this verse and of course it's philosophically very pregnant with thought but the a brief view of this is for each each jiva for each jiva there is a 
a specific type of antaryami, the specific antaryami who is there as per the jiva's capacity. Rupam, rupam, prati. Okay. For each rupas of jivas, prati, rupo, babuvaha. Okay. That supreme being has a particular unique form in each jivas. And what should the jivas do? Tat asya rupam prati chakshanaya. So each jiva should turn inside and see its own antaryamin. And how is it that this antaryamin is infinite forms and infinite jivas? In the next line, Rig Veda says, Indro, Indra, there is Indrasya Indraha, this Brahman, Maya Bihi, because of his Yoga Maya, because of his supreme power, because of his grace, Indro Maya Bihi, Purarupa Iyate, because of his great Achintya Adbuta Shakti, he has a different form of Antaryamin in each Jeeva. And that is, he quantifies this, that Harayahai Shata Dasha, Shata Dasha means they're all in, in, in Sanskrit, I mean, infinite forms. Okay? So he is in infinite forms. And again, our Prashna Upanishad says, Sa etasmad jivaganat parat param purishayam purusham ikshate. So this is a fundamental position. And again, Brahma, Brahadaranik Upanishad, again in, in sixth Adhyaya says the same thing. Atmanyeva atmanam pashyet. So you got to see this guy. You got to see the Antaryamin who is inside you. So we've understood these ideas, right, of Pratibimba and Bimba. Bimba is the Antaryamin. And there's this Pratibimba is the Jiva. And we, with this particular illustration, I've told you before, it should not be taken literally, but very metaphorically, talking about the concept of dependence and independence. Because this Bimba, this object is independent. And this Pratibimba is dependent. Unless the Bimba moves, the Pratibimba is not going to move. That is the idea. And that is the relationship between Jiva and Antaryamin, which is again is the same thing our Mundaka Upanishad also talks about. Okay. So now this is the interesting. So if you look at this cartoon here, what is happening in this example? The object is seeing the reflection. There is the mirror. The object is seeing the reflection. Okay. So now, what Yamai says is, if you do Shrotavyo, Mantavyo, Nitidya, Sitavyo, you will reach a point where the reflection will start seeing the object as well. In, the, in this example, the object, the reflection, of course, is an insentient thing. Okay? The reflection cannot see the object. Only the object can see the reflected. Whereas in Mundaka Upnej, what does it say? Samane Vriksho Purusho Nimagnaha. Anishaya Shochati Muhyamanaha Jushtam Yada Pashyati Anyam Isham Asya Mahimanam Iti Vita Shokaha. So in, in Mundaka Upanishad, that idea is also captured where he says, you know, that this bird which is eating this fruit, it needs to turn inwards and actually start facing the, the, the other bird, the witness, the eternal witness. It needs to face and start seeing this. That exactly is what Apuroksha Jnana is or Bimbarupa Shakshatkara as it's called in Shastras. So that you turn back and have a look. Okay. So now Yamai says, if you reach that situation, uh, Nachketa, if you reach that exalted position, how is that going to look like? Okay. So here, look at the example that Yama is giving. This is how the philosophy of Bimba, Pratibimba, Baba, the philosophy of dependence and independence comes from. These are all not some hypothesis that is plucked off from a tree. These are evidences directly from the Vedas. Okay. So here, our friend, our guru Yama says, Yata Adarshe Tata Atmani. Adarshe means reflection, Okay, a reflected image. So here, Yama says, just as how the reflected sees the, the object. Okay? The reflection sees the object. So there is an element of clarity, right? So in this equation, so when I look at the reflection, so if you, if you take, so you can also view it from another angle. If you say this is the kind of jiva and you're looking at the reflection, the jiva is looking at this reflection and the reflection has got some clarity there. Although it is not complete, there is an element of clarity there. 
So this is the kind of ideas that Yama is talking about. Like when you reach a stage when you, the Pratibimba, starts looking at the Bimba, that is like in the mundane world, how an image looks like on a mirror. Okay? There is some clarity, but it is not perfect. It is not a perfect clarity. It is there is some 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 amount of clarity. You say that is what we would get if you and I reach a stage of aparoksha jnana. We would reach this stage where we will be seeing this. And Yama gives that example: yata adarshe tata atmani. But that is one jivas who are you know. Of course, jivas are in mrityu loka, and our capacity is 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 limited. So says. Uh, the Vedas and so declares certain schools of Vedanta. Okay? And then Yama then qualifies that. But that clarity of vision, that clarity of vision of Aparoksha Jnana of the Supreme varies in different planetary systems is what Yama talks about. Say, for example, he takes his own Pitruloka. He says, in Pitruloka, Yama says, Nachiketa, I am also an Aparoksha Jnani. Fellows like Indra, they are also Aparoksha Jnanis. They are constantly having a vision of the Supreme, but their vision of the Supreme also is not perfect. So that is the idea that he is conveying. So here Yama says, Yata Swapne Tata Pitruloke. Okay. So Pitruloka means what? Uh, let's take a quick uh, uh, um, a discussion about Pitruloka here. So who wants to talk about Pitru Gana Devatas? Any, any views on what is Pitruloka? What is Pitru Gana Devata? Who wants to take that? Quick quiz. So, okay. So Pitruloka, Pitru Gana Devata, Shraddha, all those things, the Pinda Pradhana, all those things that you would have heard about and how uh, every year we give that pin, uh, uh, that, uh, that Shraddha to our ancestors. So go back and read about it because the Vedic philosophy of this is entirely different. The Vedic philosophy of Shraddha, Shraddha is actually to do obeisance to the Pitru Gana Devatas who look after the journey of souls. The Pitru Gana Devatas are many. Yeah, and uh, you know, you have Vasurudra, Aditya, Somapa, Kavyavaha. There are so many devatas that are described in Vedic philosophy who look after the journey of souls. Okay, and one of one among them, one happens to be a prominent one, is Yama himself. Yama himself, as you know, in Yamaloka, but he is also a Pitrugana devata. And Yama says here, Look, Nachiketa, my direct vision of the Supreme also is not clear. For me, it is like when we are dreaming, so when we are asleep and when we are in dream, we do see some images, right? We do see some images in our dream, but those images, you have a vague idea that you have seen something visual, but you still don't get the clarity of what exactly you have seen, that we all experience that. So Yama takes a very practical example and says, my vision of the Supreme, although I am a great Aparoksha Jnanin, my vision of the Supreme is also very, very blurred. Yeah, it is like how we see in dreams. Okay. Then he says he goes to Gandharva Loka. So above my planetary system is the, is the planetary systems of Gandharva Loka, Gandharvas. So Deva Gandharvas, for example. There he says, Yata apsu pari iva tadrishye tata Gandharva Loka. So what does that mean? The words are very easy. Apsu means water. Pari iva tadrishye means reflection. Okay, so the reflection in a water. So when you see an object in the reflection in as a reflection in a river, you have some clarity, but the water is there are some ripples in the water and the image again is not clear. Okay, so that is the idea there. Even the even the devatas of the Gandharva Loka have some aparoksha jnana, the vision of the supreme, but that vision also is a little bit you know subdued and it, it doesn't have clarity. Okay. And then he says the only place where there could be an element of clarity is in Brahmaloka, where Chaturmuka is. The Chaturmuka, as you know, is the first, is, is the Jivotama, right? We say, uh, you know, some schools will say Chaturmuka and Vayu together, Brahma Vayu together. They are the Jivotamas. And they are the Aparokshak Jnanins who are seeing the Supreme all the time. And what does Yama says about the highest among Jivas? He says, Chaya Tapo Yiva Brahma Loke. So what that means is these exalted jivas, they have a direct constant vision of the Supreme, but their vision is 
very clear. The clarity of that vision is very good. So what does that chaya and tapau means? Chaya and tapau. Tapau means sunlight. Chaya means shade or you know, you could say shade or in the dusk period. So what essentially it means is there is neither too much darkness nor there is too much light. The conditions are perfect. When the conditions are perfect, you have a clear vision. Okay. So that is the idea there of Chaya Tapa Eva Brahma Loke. So I think the ideas that Chatur, uh, that Yama is giving in this verse is the Aparoksha Jnani, the Aparoksha Jnana that we get, at least from Yama's perspective, when you read these verses carefully is, even that Aparoksha Jnana, the vision of the Supreme is not the same for everyone. Okay. Forget about the school that thinks they themselves are God. That is different. We are not talking about that philosophy at all. Or forget about the philosophy that thinks about all jivas are the same and their clarity of the vision is also going to be the same. That is not the view, view of uh, Yama here. What Yama is clearly saying in these verses is there are infinite jivas. Each jiva has a, has a particular capacity and there are various varieties and capacities among jivas. And based on their capacity, they have their own vision of the Supreme. And the, this Supreme is so gracious that he gives them his vision based upon their capacities. And what is that capacity? Yata adarshe tata atmani, yata swapne tata pitruloke, yata apsu pariva tadrishe tata gandharva loke, chaya tapa your eva brahma loke. So I hope you're able to grasp these ideas. These are grand ideas of the Vedic philosophy. And of course, uh, most of us have forgotten these kind of ideas that are there in Krishna Ejur Veda. We just think that we are all jivas are the same and or we are the God himself. We are all the same. We are going to have the perfect vision of the Supreme. No, <laughs> it is a bitter pill. Vedic philosophy is a bitter pill. And the philosophy, what, what Yama is saying here is slightly different. He's giving us a reality check here that yes, you will have a vision of the Supreme. But that vision will be based on your capacity. So this understanding of what our capacity is also important. Yeah, Self-understanding of our own self-limitation or our own limitation is also an important concept in Vedic philosophy. So now what uh, Yama does is he takes us through the ideas a bit more. And he says, look... I've told you about, you know, uh, that Aparoksha Jnana. I've told you that Atma Vare Drashtavyaha, Shrotavyo Mantavyo Nitidhyasitavyaha. I've told you that this Aparoksha Jnana, Nachiketa, what type of Aparoksha Jnana you get will be different from the type of Aparoksha Jnana that I have or the Pitrus or the Gandharvas or the Chaturmukha Brahma. It is all different. You need to understand and appreciate that. And then he says, he reminds Nachiketa again, how to obtain this Aparoksha Jnana? Yeah, how to obtain this Aparoksha Jnana? And what I want to do is, in the rest of the class today, it almost feels like a revision, but I think it's it's pretty important that we understand this again and again so that it is firmed up in our, in our consciousness. So Yama, in the next verse, he says, Indriyanam Pritak Bhavam Udayas Tamayo Chayate. So see this word, Udaya Astama. Udaya means rising, Asthama means setting. Asthama yo, these two, chayat. Okay. So, Indriyanam Pritak Bhavam. So, first we need to understand what this Indriyas mean. Pritak means each Indriya is different. Yeah. So, for example, Veda Vyasa composed a sutra called Pritak Upadeshat. Okay. Pritak, Pritak, look at the look at the Vedas. The Vedas always talk about difference. Pritak means difference. Each one is distinct from the other. Look at the Vedas. Veda Vyasa said Pritak Upadesha. Of course, some schools don't think about these ideas of Veda Vyasa. But Yama's view is different. To obtain Aparoksha Jnana, you need to know about these Indriyanam, these Indriyas. And you need to know that each Indriya is different from another one. Indriyanam Pritak Bhavam. So the question is who these Indriyas are. We will come to that next. And then he says, you need to understand these Indriyas, Pritak Bhavam, Udaya Astamayo Chayate. How do they come? 
and how do they go back so how do they appear during creation and how do they go back at the end of creation ubaya astamayor chayat okay so again remember the words here are beautiful udaya and astama astama means setting okay so look at astama so the sun sets right the sun sets in the west the sun rises in the east and sets in the west when it sets in the west does the sun actually disappear completely does the, the sun gets destroyed no the sun does not get destroyed it just disappears and then reappears again it means the sun is always there it is because of the rotation of the earth that it appears as the sun appears and then disappears so again an idea that the jivas never become one with brahman the jivas are the jivas brahman is the brahman jivas come out during creation and at the end of creation they just go back to brahman that is what it talks about prithak bhavam udaya astama yo chayat and then he says they come and then go but also what you need to know yama nachiketa is prithak utpatyamana nam you need to know how these indriyas are created how do they come in during creation you need to understand this greatness of these indriyas that is what yama is talking about and again these are you know grand ideas of the vedas what is that let's see in the next few slides he who knows this prithak utpatyamana nam matva dhiraha he is the real knowledgeable person he is the brave person he knows the real state of things and when he knows that na shochati shochati as you know is he does not suffer he does not feel sorrowful and etc okay so now we need to know what is indriyas okay so as i said we need to know about the origin of different indriyas and their portfolios prithak bhavam udaya astamayo udaya nastama their birth and death prithak utpatyamana nam how they are created in certain order and they dissolve in certain order he says you need to know all this uh, nachiketa to understand what is happening in in this this whole creation okay so that is your starting point and that is also a very important idea that you need to know if you need to get that aparokshagnya so why is um, so why is yama te selling all this and i put this here we talk about brahmanda and pindanda right so in this forum we have we've spoken empty number of times and we are all very familiar with the brahmanda the 24 tattvas and then we have also understood the sutra badarayana abhimani vyapadeshastu vishesha anugatibhyam for any jada component of the universe there is always a conscious component be- behind it so we have done all these classes on so many occasions and we understood the various abhimani devatas of the various 24 tattvas and we have also understood how these abhimani devatas are also operating in pindanda so that is what yama is talking about why the indriyas there are these two chapis karma indriyas and jnana indriyas yeah so you need to understand this karma indriyas and jnana indriyas in the vedic perspective okay so what is that vedic perspective so for that we need to go to purusha shukta so we really need to understand when yama says indriyanam prithak bhavam udaya astama yo chayat you need to go to purusha shukta so i'm not sure if one of our friends here would want to recite these verses please 12 13 14 and 15 so who wants to do that but so then i can do hari mm-hmm. go for it <clears throat> mukham kimasya kau bahu ka guru pada vuchete brahmano asya mukham asit bahu rajanya krutah uru tadasya yad vaishyah padbhyagam shudro ajayata chandrama manaso jatah chakshu suryo ajayata mukhad indrashagnischa pranad vayur ajayata nabhya asi dantariksham shirshno dev samavartata padbhyam bhumir disha shrotra at tatha lokagam akalpayan beautiful thank you hari so beautifully recited so 
this uh, this verse this directly relates to what yama is actually talking in this particular verse so let's spend the next two three slides just recapitulating what is it that we studied in purusha shukta let me uh, just for a reminder we did purusha shukta about two years ago i think about one and a half years ago we did purusha shukta about 10 or 12 classes so what are these verses what do they actually mean Mukam kimmasya kaubahu kaavuru pada uchyate brahmano asya mukamasit bahur rajanya krithaha uru tadasya vaishyaha patyam shudro ajayata. These are some of the most misunderstood verses of Rig Veda. There are some fools who say that the caste system of, of India came because of these verses in Rig Veda. That is far from truth and people who say this are absolute fools and I am not and I'm not afraid to say that in public because that is not what the view of the Rig Veda is. What the Rig Veda is says when it says Brahmano Asya Mukham Asid means Mukham Kim Asya Brahmanaha. So the Abhimani Devatas of those souls that have a predisposition to gain knowledge. So they come from the face of the Supreme. Who are those chaps? Chaturmukha and Agni. Kau Bahu. So Rajanyaha. So Rajanyaha there means those Abhimani Devatas that help or control those type of jivas that have a capacity to defend and to fight. Who are those? Vayu, Garuda, Sesha, Rudra, Indra, Varuna, Yama and so on. They all become the Abhimani Devatas of this. Look at Indra. He is a, we all know he's a, Indra becomes Arjuna. Arjuna is a, he wages the battle in Mahabharata, right? So he, so the Indra comes from the shoulder of the Supreme. Kau Uru Vaishyaha, Uru means the, the thighs, Aham Prana, Ganadevatas, Vasu, 10 Rudras, Adityas, 14 on Vayus, etc. They come from the, the thigh of the Supreme. Padav Shudraha, Shudraha means one, Prithvi Devatas, Ashwini twins, Mrityu, so they all classified as Abhimani Devatas of those souls whose primary predisposition to serve. Okay, So in this verse, Purusha Shukta actually talks about Abhimani Devatas. It's got absolutely nothing to do with the caste system, 100%. Okay, it's got nothing to do with this. It is all about the Devatas who come from the various aspects of Brahman. And this is important because during pralaya, during dissolution of the universe, they also go back into the same areas from where they come from Brahman. This Chaturmukha and Agni will eventually go back to the, 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 the face. Vayu will go back to the shoulder. Aham Prana will go back to the thigh aspect. Prithvi Devata Ashwini tails go, can go back to the foot aspect. But again, there is no difference between the face, shoulder, thigh and the foot aspect of Brahman. He is one and the same. He is Purna. Every aspect of him is also the same. So in that sense, you need to view this view, these verses in a very high level philosophy, not in a political sense, which gets abused in, 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 in India these days. Okay. Look at the next verse. Chandrama manaso jataha chakshor suryo ajayata mukad indrashta agnishta pranad vayur ajayata. This we are all very familiar. Chandrama manaso jataha from the mind of the supreme Chandra Devata comes. Mukad indrashta agnishta from the face agni comes. Indra comes from the face. Chakshor suryo ajayata from the chakshus of the supreme. Surya comes, Surya Devata comes. Because he comes from the eyes of the Supreme, Surya is the Abhimani Devata of our eyes. Okay, so that is how you understand the Abhimani Devata concepts. Because Surya comes from the eye of the Supreme, our eyes Abhimani is Surya. Because Chandra comes from the Manas of the Supreme, Chandra also has an impact of our, on our mental well-being. Because Agni and Indra comes from the, from the face aspect, they control. Indra, for example, is the chief controller of all the Indriyas that is there in our face. Okay. So these are all the grand visions that we need to understand. And again, when he says, Nabhyam asid antariksham shirshno dyau samavaratada padhyam bhumim dishahashrotra tatalokan akalpayan. 
So here again, Shirshno Dyao. So we have Bhu, Bhuvaha and Swaha. This is, you could classify the whole of the material universe in these three aspects, Bhu, Bhuvaha and Swaha. And then he says, Padbyam Bhumim, that becomes Bhuvaha. Okay, Nabyam Asid Antariksham, that becomes Bhuvaha. And then, that becomes swaha. So these are all the contemplations. When you do Vyagrati, Bhur Bhuva Swaha, so this is also one form of contemplation. Okay. So Dishaha Shrotrat. Okay. Dishaha Shrotrat. Look at Yama. Yama is a Shrotrat Dishaha. Dishaha means direction. Okay. The directions come from the ear of the Supreme, says the Vedas, and there are so many Abhimani Devatas that control the various directions of the, in the universe. Okay. Look at Yama. So like, Yama is Abhimani Devata for what? Who wants to answer that question? The answer is within the slide. So he is also called Dakshina. Dakshina. Sorry, Harish? Yeah, I see the same thing. Dakshina. Dakshina, yeah. And that is why Yama is also called Dakshina Sapati. Yeah, he is an Abhimani of the, the Dakshina, Southern Direction. Okay. So, we just need to be aware of this. What is it that we are aware, that we need to be aware of this? There are all these Abhimani Devatas who come from various Udaya. Their Udaya is from, they come from the various aspect of Brahman. What is their Asthama? They go back to the same places from which they come from. Utpatya mananam, how do they come and how do they go back? So you need to, Yama says, try and understand all this. Why? Because every aspect of our Pindanda has got an Indriya that comes in the next slide. And that is how Yama builds the plot here. So what is that slide? This is the next verse of Katha Upanishad. Okay. Each verse in Katha is related to the other. So look at this next verse. We are all familiar with this. And I picked up previous verses from Katha and Gita. So I'm going to ask one of you to be ready to recite 341. So what is the current Katha Upanishad verse? The immediate next verse is saying, Indriyebhyaha param manoha manasaha sattvam uttamam sattvadi mahanatma mahato avyaktam uttamam Avyaktatu paraha purusho vyapako alinga evacha. Yam nyatva muchate jantuhu amrutatvam chagachati. So that is the next verse. And this verse looks very familiar, familiar to all of us, right? Because the same yama in the first adhyaya, third valley, 10 and 11 is very similar. Indriyebhya parahi artha artebhyascha param manaha. Manasastu para buddhir buddhir atma mahan paraha mahataha param avyaktam avyakta purusha paraha purushan naparam kinchit sakashta saparagatihi. And Krishna is saying the same, I won't say same, a similar verse to Arjuna. So who wants to take up this verse? Nitaji, do you want to go for that? Yes. Indriyani Paranyahu Indriye Pepperam Manaha Manasas to Para Buddhi Your Buddhi Parasas to Saha. Thank you, Anita Ji. Yeah, so when you look at this, the verses are all very similar and they, they're talking about the same concepts. Okay, so how do you build this concept? It all starts from what Egnya Valkya says in Burhadar and Ikuprasya. Shrotavyo Mantavyo Nididhyasitavya, he says, right? But you don't do Shrotavyo just once. You don't do Mantavyo just once. You don't do Nididhyana just once. Our Guru Vedavyasa says in the fourth Adhyaya, Avruttihi Asakrit Upadeshat. Avruttihi, avruttihi. So Vyasa says, when you study the Vedas, when you study the Upanishads, study them again and again. Okay, You can't just study once, uh, you can't just hear once and say, okay, I've understood and go. No, he says, hear again, read again, go back and read again and again. Is the idea of the Vedas. Avruttihi asakrutu upadeshat. And then immediately next verse he says, lingacha. So two beautiful verses basically taking examples from the Vishayavakya for the Sutras of Badarayana or some of the Upanishads that we have already done before. Okay. 
Okay. So in Chandogya Upanishad, chapter six, right? We have done this. We have done this chapter six before. So I'm going to put a small quiz there. So what is being discussed in this conversation with Uddalaka Aruni and Shweta Ketu? What is being discussed nine times? So who wants to share their, their ideas in that what is described nine times? You don't have to describe nine times. Just once is enough, isn't it? But Uddalaka describes this nine times. What is that nine times that verse? Who wants to say that? I've got that uh, clue there in the, in the verse itself. Anybody wants to go and recite that verse? So um, if we don't have, oh, yes, okay. Yeah, very good, Tattvamasi, yes. Sushil? Uh, is it uh, by knowing that one thing, you know everything? Yeah, so that is also that. So that is Vacharambana Shruti also. Yeah, so you could put that. So that is also described three times. Very good. So that also you know Vacharambana Karo Namadeyam, Murtika iti eva satyam, Lohamani iti eva satyam, Karshnayasam iti eva satyam. It is discussed three times. But here in the same Uddalaka, here also discusses Saya esha anima aitadatmyam idam sarvam tat sarvam sa atma tattvamasi shweta keto. Nine times, nine illustrations he has given. So that is Avrittihi Asakritu Upadesha. And then the next sutra, he talks about something called Lingacha. And we haven't done the Taitreya Upanishad before, which as you know, is also part of the Krishna Yajurveda. Taitreya Upanishad, Bhruguvalli, third, third, third chapter, where Varuna and Bhrugu, they're having a conversation. And there four times... Okay, Bruhu, who is the son of Varuna, asks us questions. Bruhu, Bruhu Varunihi, Varunam Pitaram Upasasara. Punareva Varunam Pitaram Upasasara. He goes again and again and asks the similar kind of questions. So the idea there is, and what we understand as to why Yama has put very similar verses in this second Adhyaya also, very similar to the first Adhyaya is, he is reminding us here, look, there are some key concepts that you have to go back and revise and read them again and again. Okay. So there are two ideas of, of Shastras that I just want to uh, mention here. There is something called Punarukti. There is something called Avrutti. Punarukti is a repetition. Repetition is also called tautology, tautology in Western philosophy. So repetition, you keep on saying the same thing again and again. Sometimes you can get a little bit annoyed, right? So that repetition is, 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 is a defect. We all know our kids tell us, don't keep saying the same thing again and again. I'll do it when I can. So we have heard all that at home. So that punarukti is considered as a dosha, whereas avrutti is also called abhyasa. Abhyasa is, is a reiteration. Reiteration means go back and revision. You revise so that you get your knowledge firmed up. So I got the, another beautiful verse there. Eight, chapter 8, 8 verse. So who wants to recite this? I'll read that. Um, okay. Who, uh, who, who was the final? Oh, Pratipaji, go for it. Abhyasa yoga, Abhyasa yoga yuktena, chetasana nyaghamina, paramam purusham devyam yati parta nuchintayan. Beautiful Pratipaji. We will also get the, the other contribution also. Was that Suresh? I can't be sure. Yes, Mother. Yeah, go for it, Suresh. You also say that it's a key verse. Uh -huh. Abhyasa yoga yuktena, chetasana nyaghamina. Paramam Purusham Divyam Yati Parthanu Chintayan. Yeah, so again, thank you uh, both. Uh, so again here, Abhyasa, Abhyasa Yogena. And Abhyasa is a very, very familiar verse in Gita, Abhyasa. Do Abhyasa again, again, yeah? So Avrithi and Abhyasa are very related. And they should not be confused with Punarupti because in the Upanishads, you will see this again and again in various Upanishads. Classic example, as Veda Vyasa tells us here, is Chandogya Upanishad, Taitri Upanishad, and, and uh, Sushrut today has reminded us that Vacharambana Shruti is also Avrutihi Asakrita Upadesha with similar ideas. Uh, but also, uh, Sushrut, wise we are there, there are three ideas that the verses sound similar, but actually, there are three concepts that are brought about in that Vacharambana Shuti. So what are those? 
sadrishya tadat sadrishya pradhanya and kaimutya so those are the three ideas go back and look at those vacharamana shruti of what is sadrishya what is pradhanya and what is kaimutya so there are slightly different ideas that are discussed also the verses are similar okay so that is what i wanted to introduce this concept of revision okay so we do need to do that and what i wanted to do is because yama has instructed nachiketa that you do this this revision what i want to do is the next 15 20 minutes that we have is actually to go and understand this this whole indriyabhya param mano manasah satvam uttamam satvaadi mahan atma mahato avyaktam uttamam avyaktat purush parah purusho avyapaka alinga eva cha yam nyatva muchyate jantu ramrutatvach gachati so what we can do is i don't think we will have time to do the whole two verses but what we could do is this verse and possibly the first three words of the second verse so i think we will do that and close today's session because they are beautiful and we are all familiar with this so who wants to talk about this so we have to go to that original verse to understand this we have to go to this yeah atmanam ratinam vidhi shariram ratam eva tu buddhi tu saratim vidhi manah pragraham eva cha indriyani hayan ahuhu vishayanteshu gocharan okay so who wants to tell us about this and i got the figures put the arrows you got the chariot with five horses you got the car with a driver and a passenger and four wheels and the fifth wheel is in the in the boot so who wants to take us through this verse and remind us about what each component actually is stands for So let's pick somebody. Suresh, do you want to go for it, or yeah, anybody? Can try. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, the the five horses that are five uh, sense organs. Yeah. Uh, uh, the uh, or the five. I mean, the way you have put it there is the body, mind, intellect, sense organs, and sense objects. Uh, so the where i was going was sense five sense organs being attracted towards the sense objects yeah. to be controlled by the mind uh, here uh, the the intellect is the one which uh, uh, through which we exercise control on the uh, the judgment is there through which we exercise the control on the minds to and and direct them in the right direction but uh, and, and and there is the uh the, the soul that's the that's at the back seat so the the, the sakshi the accepts the the soul accepts the facts through the judgment that's ex, uh, exercised through the intellect towards directing the chariot in the right direction uh, does that make sense i wasn't sure yeah excellent anybody else wants to add anything else here please feel free to do so because this, we are doing um, we are we are doing revision right here okay cool so i think i think sushrut uh, captured the most important thing so atmanam ratinam vidhi so the passenger is the soul shariram ratam evat this chariot is the body this car is the body buddhim tu saratim vidhi the buddhim here is the charioteer or the car driver manah pragraham evacha the manah is the reins of this chariot that holds the horses or the steering wheel of the car indriyani hayanahu so these horses are the indriyas and here they are the wheels of this car what do these horses do vishayan teshu gocharan they are going towards the vishayas what are the vishayas the tanmatras shabda sparsha roopa rasa gandha shrotra tvak chakshus rasana grahana so the indriya jnana indriyas going towards the objects and how do we do we go towards shreyas or prayers and in the very next verse in the first adhyaya uh, he says a few other things but let me just finish this one so so here when we do these ideas then the question is but why do some of us choose the wrong path and one why, why only minority of us are heading in the right direction so uh, suresh and, uh, and this is for every one of us to this is a revision right so if there are two directions that this chariot can take it can either go towards prayers or it can go towards shreyas but 
why are most of us always choosing only the wrong path we are not going in the right direction why is that happening any ideas here anybody avidya uh, pra yeah prahla ji do you want to elaborate that a bit more yeah so one is uh, avidya and uh, agnana agnana comes uh, from from the beginning and the jiva will have all these coverings of agnana and because of that uh, you tend to take the the path of uh, uh, prayers and when the agnana uh, is is uh, is gone then you you tend towards the shreyas path which is which is where uh, i understand thank you pralad ji so anybody else so i think uh, somebody else also to unmute i think anybody else also want to contribute here suresh yeah uh we learned earlier madhu all our indriyas are indeed external facing and and uh, it is perhaps the natu i mean it, there is there are external objects and and the first instance is is towards to be attracted towards material world which perhaps fits into the definition of uh, prayas that we like where there is immediate uh, fruits i mean when you see the outcome of the actions uh here and now whereas what's shreyas is perhaps which is going to elevate us and the the results of the actions are not there now they are not imminent so unless one is able to internalize and 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 know and judge that what is good for what i like and what is good for me and being able to differentiate so being able to go to a shreyas is not uh an easy and uh, a natural thing perhaps and it requires training and practice and then that's the reason perhaps most of us generally tend to go towards what sprays and then that's what we need to learn to differentiate and uh, direct our mind towards what sprays okay sure it's beautiful anybody else uh, uh, with a few different ideas pratibha ji i think it's the jeeva swabhava which helps us to decide whether to go to this prayers and shreyas no? sure pratibha ji excellent anybody else any other ideas okay so i think we have captured quite a lot of uh, you know uh, ideas from from what we have discussed discussed before so yes all of us are right but i just want to remind you what is yama saying in that particular uh, particular chapter yastu avijnanavan bhavati ayuktena manasa sada tasya indriyani avashyani drushta ashwa दुष्ट अश्वा इव सारते यस्तु विज्ञानवान भवती युक्तेन मनसा सद तस्य इंद्रियानि वश्यानि सद अश्वा इव सारते so as as prahlad ji was mentioning about avijnana and vijnana the one that has the right intellect what can that one do that is able to control the intellect control the mind and by controlling the mind is controlling the sense of sense organs and by controlling all this this soul who has got the jnana or vijnana remember yama is put vijnana there and who has the vijnana then that one will make a decision to go towards the right object so we can decide which object we want we can take our senses to the the mundane objects or we can take our senses to this the super sensual object called the paramatma himself so we can decide so this becomes the shreyas and this becomes the prayers when we have this dushta ashwa iva sarate yeah and then he then goes on to yasta vijnanavan bhavati amanaskaha sada asuchihi nasa tat padam apnoti samsaram cha gachati so again he says this ones who do have this avijnana inadequate intellect they go around in samsara yastu vijnanavan bhavati samanaskah sada shuchihi satu tat padam apnoti yasmad bhuyo na vijayate na jayate so this one that uses vijnana they take a direction where eventually they will never come back again which means that they will go to moksha sthiti whereas here samsaram cha adigachati Okay, he just keeps on coming in samsara. So Yama says that very clearly. Yeah, then he says, "Vijnana sarathir yastu manaha pragrahavan naraha sa advanaha param apnoti tad vishnoho paramam padam." Okay, 
okay categorical declaration of yama here that one which in which controls the intellect the mind and the sense organs and goes towards the paramatma eventually he'll reach a stage he'll go to this final abode and what is that final abode yama categorically declares that that final abode is tad vishnoho paramam padam he goes and reaches this vishnu yeah so key verses to for us to think about so now let us go back and what is it that this verse is saying so we are all familiar with this this medical link isn't it you got the sense organs you have the sense objects then you have the sense organs you have all the sense organs various sense organs that we have they go to the spinal cord from there they go to the brain and they get processed in the brain then the brain there is the mind which is uh, you know manon maya kosha uh, uh, an evolute of the brain it gets processed in the brain in the mind the mind has got five components isn't it when i say antakarana there are actually five components to it manas buddhi ahankara chitta and chetana and then the soul so that is the sequence which is perfectly physiological and which is exactly what yama has also said in the first adhyaya and he is saying the same in this in this adhyaya yeah so then again what we need to do is we just need to fit that as to how krishna has said here yeah so here krishna what did he say in 342 indriyani parani ahuhu indriyebhya param manah manasastu para buddher buddhe paratastu saha Okay. So what did he say? Indriyani parani ahu. So the indriya, indriyani para, indriyani parani ahu, indriye bhya param mana. Indriyas are bigger than the gross body. Bigger than the uh, indriyas is the mind. Bigger than the in, mind is the buddhi. And then what Krishna says here is from the buddhi he directly jumps to paramatma. Buddhehe paratastu saha. So when Krishna is saying this, from Buddhi he has jumped to uh, uh, to Paramatma in Kataka Upanishad. If we study the Kataka Upanishad and Gita together, we can fill in the blanks. And in the Kataka Upanishad, these guys also come into discussion. Okay. So that is how the anatomy and physiology is. So now is where we need to put our Abhimani Devata concept here, which we have done before. Abhimani Vyapadeshastu Visesha Nagati Bhyam. And in Pindanda, we have looked at all the Devatas, Abhimani Devatas that do various things for our Karma Indriyas and Jnana Indriyas. And I have listed them all here. Jnana Indriya, Surya, Chandra, Kubera, Varuna, Ashwini. 12th, 12th, 18th, 13th, 18th. So you need, to, for those of you who are interested, you can memorize all this. Okay, so then what happens? Seventh rank is Artha, and then Manas. Who are the folks of the Manas? Garuda, Sesha, Rudra. Who are the fifth rank Devatas? Then Manas. Beyond Manas is the Buddhi. Who is the Abhimani of Buddhi? Saraswati, Bharati, fourth rank. Who is the uh, who is higher than the Buddhi? Chaturmukha and Vayu. Who are the third rank? Buddhir Atma Mahan. So Atma Mahan means Chaturmukha, the one who is the head of the Mahatattva. mahan there means mahat tatva okay so atma mahan so he is also the abhimani of the jivas okay chaturmukha and vayu so buddher atma mahan para mahatah param avyaktam and we have understood avyakta is the shri tatva avyakta purusha para is narayana himsel at the top so that is from the first adhyaya okay so now so now you can understand indra parvati rudra saraswati chaturmukha lakshmi and narayana as the root he says here yama again is reminding us that this is important may follow this now look at this verses here what i have done is i have put them next to each other and compared and contrast so that we can understand what are the ideas coming here so indriyebhya parahi artah indriyebhya param mano in the current verse okay अर्थेभ्यश्च परम मनः मनसः मनो इंद्रियेभ्यः परम मनो मनसः सत्वम उत्तमम ओके सो हियर बुद्धि इज रिप्लेस्ड बाय व्हाट इज कॉल्ड सत्वम ओके सत्वम इज आल्सो अ नेम फॉर बुद्धि या सो इट इज नॉट नॉट समथिंग डिफरेंट इट इज द सेम सत्वम आल्सो मींस द कैपेसिटी फॉर making those decisions about right and wrong and so on so our intellect is buddhi is also called sattvam manasastu para buddhi okay buddher atma mahan paraha so here what he says sattvadi mahan atma mahataho mahato avyaktam uttamam okay so very similar 
தென் மகதக பரம் அவ்வியக்தம் அவ்வியக்தாத் புருஷ பரக அவ்வியக்தாத்து பரக புருஷோ okay so exactly the same the only thing that is different is buddhi is replaced by sattvam which is not problematic because sattvam is also another name for the intellect okay so now you put this one in the equation okay indriya bhya param mano manasah sattvam uttamam sattvaadi mahan atma mahato avyaktam uttamam avyaktaatu parah purusho so the same guys will come here manas சத்துவம் மகானாத்மா அவ்வியக்தம் அவ்வியக்தாத் புருஷ பரஹ மனஸ் வினோ கருடசேஷ ருத்ர சத்வம் சதுர்முக சரஸ்வதி பாரதி மகானாத்மா சதுர்முக வாயு அவ்வியக்தம் லக்ஷ்மி அவ்வியக்தாத்து புருஷ பரஹ ஓகே சோ நவ் ஐ ஹவ் காட் அ ஸ்மால் குவிஸ் ஹியர் டு ஜஸ்ட் வேக் யூ ஆல் அப் வை இஸ் லக்ஷ்மி கால் அவ்வியக்த தத்துவ ஹூ வாண்ட்ஸ் டு ஆன்சர் தட் கொஸ்டின் any any takers why lakshmi is called avyakta yes sushrut hmm. primordial matter she is controlling the primordial matter brilliant excellent anybody else devil ji she is always there okay she is always there okay that's fine um okay both of you got similar ideas so avyakta vyakta means what vyakta means that which is manifested avyakta means that which is unmanifested yeah so the manifested universe is the gross universe and as shushrut was saying when the universe is dissolved uh, it eventually becomes what it becomes an unmanifested form and that unmanifested form is what is the mula prakriti yeah and the abhimani of the mula prakriti is lakshri tatva therefore when i say avyakta tatvam i mean shri tatva so uh, and that shri tatva devil you are absolutely right is always anadi nitya it's always there always all pervasive along with the brahman and except that her all pervasiveness is dependent on the paramatma himself so those are all the subtle differences that that we have studied uh, over the Sorry, years i came i came from a different angle i was trying to say that uh, because consciousness is jiva the consciousness in the jiva is always there that is the bit is always there with lakshmi so yeah so uh, yeah so you could, you can say yes abhimani devata of um, anandamaya kosha is uh, shri tatva from that perspective but uh, what i am getting at uh, devil is the literal meaning of avyakta what is avyakta versus vyakta yeah vyakta means that which is manifested avyakta means that which is unmanifested that which is that we cannot see so that is the literal that was the idea that i was uh, coming from but anyway so that's fine thanks devil for that so the verses are very very similar yeah so this is how you look at this verse so why is this important and this this slide gives you some key ideas yeah so when you study vedic philosophy without understanding the vedic pantheon if one approaches the veda there is no point i i i'm i'm sorry to break that bubble but we really need to understand the vedic pantheon and need to understand what are all these various conscious entities doing both in pindanda and brahmanda okay it's very important says yama in this verse and also across the upanishads this is what is is discussed and we know of course the shodasha kala purusha yeah then we have used to discuss that quite a lot right and each component the 15 component pranam chandram kham vayu jyoti rapaha prithivi indriyam manaha anna annam anna dviryam tapo mantraha karmaha loka lokesho cha nama cha so these are all the 15 coverings of the jivas and there in that prashna upanishad pipalada actually teaches that each covering each fence there is an abhimani devata and then you have this 18 steps towards narayana yeah so the 16th entity is jiva 17th is the shri tatva 18th is the vishnu and how we have discussed this 18 to reach the 18 you have to take these steps yeah and then reach the 18 each step corresponds to an abhimani devata and and there is a rank and there is a increasing ranking of this abhimani devata which is what the vedic pantheon is and why we need to know this vedic pantheon is critical component of vedic philosophy why and i put this here when you approach a temple as per vedic philosophy then it makes sense or when you see your purohita when you do a puja 
when you do a puja when you bring somebody for satyarana puja for example or any other puja just watch what the what the what the purohita is doing he will invoke various abhimani devatas to come and then he will invoke the paramatma to come and then do the puja yeah this is the procedure for doing pujas of invoking various abhimanis when you go to the temple you have all these guys and their vigrahas there without understanding the vedic pantheon without understanding what is it that they are doing in brahmanda and pindanda i'm sorry this just does not will not make sense and people become very fanatical about one particular devata and he is the supreme he is the inferior and so on they fight around this i don't know why they do it all that i will request them is humbly to study the vedic texts and understand what is the vedic pantheon and what is the vedic philosophy because this is the key idea here god should be worshiped along with his family parivara devatas yeah devatas should not be worshiped as sarvottama that is very categorical in the vedas you don't expect uh, uh, you know uh, you can't expect let me say indra to give you uh, moksha indra cannot give you moksha indra is only abhimani devata of your of your indriyas that is all is his portfolio he cannot give you he cannot eradicate karma and he cannot ensure that your linga sharira is gone and then you will go into moksha that is not their portfolio so devatas should not be worshiped as sarvottama devata worship is essential for our spiritual progress and without devata worship upanishads at least my understanding of the upanishad is without appreciating and worshiping the devatas you just cannot go to the supreme some people say i'll directly go to the president nowhere in the in the physical universe one can approach the president of india or prime minister of uh, england directly you got a route you got to go through the various principal secretaries this cabinet secretary the pun the security guard and so on and so forth and then you have fix an appointment with prime minister and then you go and see him yeah you just don't say i'm going to come and see you mr prime minister and don't go don't do this that is not how the the vedic philosophy works in this material universe you have this kind of system because a similar system actually exists in the eternal uh, universe of brahman yeah because it is there you have this system here okay you cannot have one system here and another system elsewhere that is not what vedic philosophy is saying so devata worship is essential for our spiritual progress devatas are in pindanda as per god's will and we have we have done that yeah bayadasya agni tapati bayadasya surya we have done all that verse devatas perform their function as a form of worship to the lord okay we worship the devatas to guide us in the right direction to the supreme so this is a key point that yama comes again and again and talks about this yet some of us have forgotten this and we get very fanatical about this i don't know why we do this all that we need to do is have a an impartial reading of what the vedas are saying what the rishis are saying and approach this problem in a very democratic way then everything makes sense now i've seen these uh this you know uh, these very popular verses from chapter 1866 that some folks latch on to it and then say this is the reason why we will not go to any other devatas but we will ha- we have a direct hotline to paramatma himself okay so we will have a discussion and close today's session on that because i think it's it's important and interesting so who wants to recite these two verses please 1866 and 25 हेलो या नीता जी गो फॉर इट यांति देव वृता देवान पितृ न्यांति पितृ वृता हा भूतानि यांति भूतेज्या यांति मध्या जिनोपि माम सर्व धर्मान परित्यज्य मामेकं शरणं व्रज अहम अहम सर्वपापेभ्यो मोक्षयिष्यामि माशुचः yeah beautiful uh, thanks nita ji so yeah these are all some of the words that makes us think in this verse in 25 krishna says if you worship this devata you will go to their to, you will go to their uh, kingdom if you worship pitrus you will go to pitruloka if you worship indra you will go to indraloka if you worship ganesha you will go to ganesha loka 
but if you worship me you will come to me so how do you understand this verse the verse needs to be understood with these key points that i have summarized the idea there is if you think ganesha is going to give you moksha that is not going to happen ganesha has got a portfolio okay and if you worship ganesha with that love to ganesha you will go with him you will go to his loka that's it you will not get moksha that is the idea that krishna is talking about it he is not saying don't worship ganesha don't worship saraswati don't worship bharati don't worship rudra don't worship uh, other deities he is not saying don't worship them he is saying worship them in the right perspective worship them so that they are the abhimanis of your pindanda and that they can give you the direction to approach me and when they provide their grace you move more towards shreyas and then you start coming to me and when you come to me eventually i when you when you have that intention to come to me with the right knowledge then i will ensure that you come to me okay and that is why he has said in 66 forget about all others just surrender to me surrender to me with what surrender to me with all your indriyas towards me and those indriyas have my parivara devatas so you worship them ensure that you use your indriyas in the right direction and then you surrender to me then i will release you that is what gita has said in 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 these verses these are categorical so i just want to reiterate these ideas of yama here that some people forget about what the vedas are saying and they think they have a hotline to krishna good luck to them but actually shastras are telling us that there is a system you have to follow that system and then approach me so that makes the whole uh, you know the whole uh, vedic philosophy and the hindu form of worship much more colorful much more colorful much more practical i feel and in mundaka of course he said tam evekam janata atmanam anyavacha vimunjata amrutasya isha setu and again of course mundaka talks about this quite a lot so i hope you and you were able to appreciate what is it that yama is actually talking about here why he has brought these ideas of uh, indriya bhya parahi artha concepts about abhimani devatas and how he brings these ideas again because he is doing that so that we are we are practicing what he is actually teaching us we need to practice what yama has preached us yeah about these six key points and how we need to go to a temple with these ideas and how we need to observe when our purohita does a puja how he brings all these deities uh, and then he does the puja so observe all that then you will understand how the vedic form of worship actually operates and when you do that it becomes much more colorful and purposeful for our devotional service Okay. then of course yama then goes on to say when you do all this when you use your abhimani devatas in the right spirit you will then have an understanding of me okay and then he would immediately say who is me i am avyakta tu paraha purushaha who is this purushaha he is this vyapako alinga evacha is interesting it can be split in so many ways he can be vyapaka he can be avyapaka he can be linga this can be alinga so we can look at all that um, not next week but the week after that avya his purusha is here described as vyapako alinga evacha yam nyatva muchyate jantuhu amrutatvam cha gachati he who knows this paramatma like this and he who worships paramatma with the previous verses that i have told you that person what happens to him amrutatvam cha gachati very clear statement only those folks go to amrutatva okay not others yeah so we will look at all this in great detail in a fortnight's time so pavan is going to be leading on chapter 16 next sunday so i'm really looking forward to it and hope we'll have a good attendance and and contributions for chapter 16 so on that note i'm going to close today krishna pranamastu and i can take uh, we can do any uh, discussions if there is any can i ask a question yeah they will go for it yeah this concept of abhimani devata is it more with this uh, dvaita school of philosophy uh, 
Um, uh, yes and no. Interesting, important question, Devalji. So actually, it is there in um, uh, to some extent in two school uh, in two other schools of Vedanta. Uh, and, uh, and of course, in Advaita, it, it does not, uh, you know, fold a strong fold because there is no devatas in in in, in Advaita. Okay, everybody is God. Yeah, so that's the core concept of Advaita. So the concept of Abhimani Devata doesn't come in. So that is where the discussions about Sutra Bhashyas become very important. So when Veda Vyasa has very clearly said Abhimani Vyapadesha Stut. Uh, Vishesha Anugati Bhyam, you need to read through what the Acharyas talk about, what is that Abhimani Devata concept. So some schools conveniently do not describe that because it's not conducive to their own hypothesis. So that is the first point I wanted to say. The other one is in the Vishishta Dvaita school, Ramanujacharya in Sri Sri Bhashya, he takes up the concept of Abhimani Devatas and discusses them in that particular Sutra Bhashya. Uh, but of course, in their uh, in the in the theology, in the theology of Vishishta Advaita, the concept of Abhimani Devatas is not put directly into practical use. Of course, you have Garuda. Garuda is a very key component. Garuda, Vishwaksena, so they are all important de devatas of Vishishta Advaita school. So they come in, those Abhimani, some of them are called Nitya Suri. So they also come in in their, in their worship. Garuda, Sesha, Rudra, they are also there. Their devatas are also there. But in certain other schools like the Tattvavada that you are mentioning, these ideas are much more evolved. It's much more evolved in the sense it goes to the core Vedic scriptures themselves. It goes to the primary document. It goes to the primary document like the Katha Upanishad that I've explained to you today with the previous verses as to what is it that the Katha Upanishad is talking about. So the Tattvavada, what it will do is it will go to the primary source and then discuss and then infer that from the primary source, we understand why Abhimani Devatas are important. So their worship should be promoted. And hence, you have to worship Shiva and Parvati. You have to worship Skanda and Ganesha. You have to worship these, these exalted beings because without worshipping them, you can never go to Tad Vishnuho Paramampadam. So that is how the Tattvavada takes that as well. So I think, uh, thanks for asking that question, Deval, because it's, it's important. So what we have to do is, and what I have tried to do is, uh, capture the spirit of the Upanishad and explain to you what is it that the Upanishad is saying. And, and of course, at the end of the day, it's up to us, right? We choose what we want. That is where the Shreyas and Preyas ideas come in. Based on our own Swabhava, and uh, our Purushakya Prayatna, our Anadi Karma and Swabhava, we decide to choose a particular path. So that is up to us. But this is what Yama is saying. And I've just kept to the spirit of what Yama is saying in these verses. I hope that answers your question in a very uh, impartial way, Devan. Harish. And then we'll come uh, to Neeta Ji. Yeah. She had a question. Yeah. Harish. Yeah, so um, my question was more related to the earlier discussion on Ap Paroksha Jnana and uh, and how you know uh, depending on which plane you're on it may not be as clear uh, you know the when you look at paramatma so is there any guidance given on what we are expected to see and is the imagery that is you know that we described in the puranas supposed to be an aid there i guess is one question yeah excellent and, question uh, I, 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 and a second, secondary question is, you know, we've also heard in some cases, you know, again, uh, one example that comes to mind is Ramakrishna Paramahamsa who said, I, I see God as clearly as I see you, right? We told Vivekananda. So how do we understand comments like that? Okay, so fine. So I, uh, so the first question is interesting. Uh, anybody wants to, uh, you know, have put some uh, uh, contributions there. So Harish, if you want to repeat the first question again, please. Yeah, so the first question is in uh, Aparukh. So for for uh, individuals that uh, uh, are fortunate to get a Paroksha Jnana in uh, in this world in Bhuloka, what would be what to expect in terms of uh, uh, the vision or to identify that you have seen Paramatma? How do you know that you have seen? Yeah. So any anybody wants to say something there or uh, uh, yeah? Um, don't you need? I thought what we need to do is to go up the lokas. That was how I understood it. Okay, so um, yeah, thanks, Devan. So Harish, the answer to that is, uh, honest answer to that is, don't know. Okay, none of us will know whether we will have Aparokshit or not. 
okay so but at least we need to make prayatna towards that so one idea there is because we are all engaged in satsang and we have done this for well over two years plus now perhaps maybe there is some tinge of uh, satvika guna in us and hopefully at some point we will reach a stage where we will be able to get aparoksha jnanam so that is um, that is possible so it is first thing is it is possible that all of us that is in this satsang group may get aparoksha jnana at some point okay that is the first one. the next one is once you get aparoksha jnana what will be your aparoksha jnana and how will it be different from my aparoksha jnana i have absolutely no idea because it is ultimately your own experience of this so it all comes to the experience of your own aparoksha jnana and your experience is going to be unique for yourself and it is going to be different compared to shushrut's aparoksha jnana okay the that experience is going to be different what this verse is telling us is it is giving you some evidence saying that these are all the various shades of aparoksha jnana that that is that uh, that vedas describe and we take the veda as the supreme source of apor authority because it's aparushya aparushya text so when yama in krishna in krishna yajur veda is giving us these ideas of aparoksha jnana and if vedas are aparushya and every aspect of the vedas has to be taken as authoritative then all that we can infer from this is that there is a gradation in aparoksha jnana although in which which level we will all fall into no idea it will it will have to be uh, individual experience so my advice uh, harish is when you get your aparoksha jnana please do share with us in in what shade <laughs> it's either going to be a reflection water and and so on but Can it is I... when it will happen so at least one yeah. thing we can understand this we will get aparoksha jnana at some point mm-hmm. and then when we get it based on our own swarup yogyata we might get a clarity so that was the first one the second one you said was rama krishna paramahamsa said uh, sorry uh, harish you want to repeat that that he sees god yeah, as- no yeah it's it's again it's maybe just an anecdote but when uh, uh, swami vivekananda spoke to him and said have you seen god you know his clear his answer was yes i see him very clearly i see him all the time you know he has visions of kali you know you have read so many stories about that right so yeah so so i mean uh, some paramahamsas right so uh, again when we did this hamsa gayatri we spoke about paramahamsas there are various paramahamsas the highly knowledgeable highly elevated souls so for them maybe chaya tapo brahma loke you remember that last gradation where you see clearly so for those paramahamsas you can see them clearly and that is why chaturmukha and vayu are got khamsas so we have done that was hamsa suchishat right so that hamsa suchishat so the highest among the jeevas will have a very clear vision so perhaps if ramakrishna paramahamsa was in that category then yes of course he will have a very clear vision so maybe uh, that is a, that is one way of looking at it but of course paramahamsa ramakrishna paramahamsa's fundamental philosophy is there is no jeeva okay jeeva brahmaikya is the fundamental oh, right. philosophy there so i sometimes struggle to square that circle where you see you have visions of kali but then you say you are paramatma so i i sometimes struggle to understand that that is probably my own ignorance and i need to look into that uh, that philosophy a bit more in detail thanks arish okay thank you anybody else just to uh, can i add what harish we were just discussing yeah uh, yama himself says in in the first verse tade tade ti mannante anirdishyam paramam sukham katam tu na tvajaniyam kimu bhati na bhatava that means even he says it's a unquantifiable uh, experience whatever jnana or god you have seen and he himself says it's like blind man touching an elephant that was the analogy we we uh, we we thought that like, yeah everybody touches elephant but it is they don't know how the complete is elephant but whatever is you touch you experience yeah thank so you the tools we have to uh, comprehend that is insufficient right i mean our uh, eyes and our words and is that uh, how how i have to understand the comment pala sorry pala ji that's for you sorry can you repeat no i, I... 
Yeah, I was just saying that the, the tools we have, like words, uh, limitations of words, uh, limitations of you know uh, form and all that, that that will uh, limit us from being able to describe you know when we have that experience, perhaps. Yeah, the ultimate is yeah, the experience is your own uh, individual thing uh, on your capacity. It's it's nobody can quantify that experience that how he is. Thank you. Yeah. So, so Harish, I, uh, uh, it's very timely that you brought that up because the, 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 you know, the very next verse that Yama has said, Avyakta, Avyapako, Alinga Yevacha. Okay. So that word Alinga. So the Alinga that Yama uses in this verse is exactly this idea. He is Linga means that which can be described by logic, that which can be described for some form. Aliga means that which is beyond logic, that which beyond perception and so on. So that is the idea that uh, that Yama is also brings up in the very next verse, who this Purusha is, how your experience with that is going to be. So yeah, so we'll have a, a whole scale discussions of all that. Um, and uh, and uh, looks like in the next three or four classes, we will actually be finishing Katha Upanishad. Devil, you have unmuted. Yeah, sorry, I'm just, I'm still a bit confused. So, are we saying that the, uh, in the concept of Abhimani Devtas, does the soul go to different lokas or not? Okay, is so... There um, the, the, is there a gradation of when you have a Puroksha Jnana, that you will go to a different loka, or that is not, or you get that, uh, okay. Jnana as a uh, as in this loka, I'm, okay. I'm a bit confused here. Yeah. Okay, so the two ideas there. One is aparoksha Jnana, and the other one is the the uh, the path. Krishna talks about this in the path of um, the path of the sun or the path of the moon. The ones that go to the path of the sun will keep on going and reach the moksha. The one that goes to the path of the moon will again come back to samsara. So he talks about all these, these paths. So your idea about which lokas that they go. So they will, here is where the idea is. The, the, you know, you remember the karmic imprints of souls, right? So the karmic imprints of souls with regards to whatever karmas that they do, that is what dictates where they go. Yeah. Even if they go to Indra Loka, for example, they will, this is still part of samsara. Yeah. They will still go to Indra Loka, do their, uh, you know, uh, exercise their karmic uh, uh, effects. And then again, they'll come to Mrityu Loka. So that going to various Lokas is more directed by the karmas that the jivas do and that dictates where they go up and down. You may go up, they may can go to uh, Patala also and again come back again to Murti Loka. So they keep going from all these places is what the Vedic philosophy says. So that is about going to various Lokas. Okay, So that should not be confused with the Aparoksha Jnana. The Aparoksha Jnana that, that you can get. And there are some some great uh, rishis who have been described in, in, in Upanishads and Shastras who have had Aparoksha Jnana. And again, Veda Vyasa talks about this in the fourth Adhyaya. What happens after Aparoksha Jnana? What happens to these various rishis after Aparoksha Jnana? So here is the answer to that question, Deval. Once you have had Aparoksha Jnana, what is supposed to happen is, and I think Neetaji was mentioning that, that particular verse last week, Jnana Agnihi Basmasad Kurute, what it destroys the Sanchita Karmas. So all your Sanchita Karmas are destroyed when you get Aparoksha Jnana. But then you still have the Prarabdha Karmas, right? The prara, the Karmas that have started fruition. That fruition has to be completed. So in that process, you might go up and down to various Lokas, etc. You might still be born as an insect or an ant, or you might still be a human. You may be, you may go to Gandharva Loka, you may go wherever based on what the Prarabdha Karma is. But eventually what will happen is once you've finished your Prarabdha Karma, the Shastra says that you will go and sit with Chaturmukha in Satya Loka. And then once Chaturmukha finishes his Brahma Kalpa, then you will you know, shed your Linga Sharira and you'll go into the womb of the Supreme. Then, as you know from last week, he says, Tata Sargeshu Lokeshu Shariratvaya Kalpate. That was the previous verse of Yama. And then in the next creation, there are one set of souls will go to samsara, one set will go to nitya naraka, and one set will go to moksha. That is how the vision is. So I hope that explains your answer as to what happens after aparoksha A bit complicated, but as I said, this is a bitter pill to swallow. 
there isn't a you there isn't a easy solution fifteen thousand dollars will not give us moksha unfortunately even uh, 10 billion dollars is not going to give uh, moksha so we have to go through this the long cosmic lives there are long time spans that are involved in this but then the way to understand that is and again the vedas talk about relativity of time yeah so when you go to some other loka on earth from earth years perspective it could be millions of years but from that particular planetary system's perspective, the time may be entirely different. So when I say, you know, 4.32 million years, et cetera, et cetera, that is from an Earth year's perspective. Yeah, so you're looking at it from an Earth years. Whereas in the Chaturmukha Loka, you may not be experiencing this Earth years type of time. So you might be experiencing a different time scales altogether. So what I'm trying to say there is, you're not going to be sitting around doing nothing for another 49 years of Chaturmukha Brahma, because that is a lot of time. But the time in Chaturmukha's planetary system is going to be different. So I don't think you'll have that much of time, David. So I think you'll be fine. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, excellent. So if there are no further questions, we'll close today's session. Harish, take us through home, please. Wonderful. Thank you, everyone. Um, stay safe. So as I said, we got a wonderful session next Sunday, chapter 16. So please do, do some... Um, some uh, background reading. We have done a lot of shreyas and prayers discussions uh, this week. So there's going to be a lot more of that next Sunday. Okay. All right. We'll see you next week. Take care. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.